No! 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 Hi there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Ed Draws and or makes, I guess. Maybe I should change my channel name to that because I spend a lot of time drawing and a lot of time making. Maybe a little bit more time making. But with algorithmic art, you can kind of do both. You can draw and make, or basically you draw by directing the computer to use an algorithm to make artwork. So if you do a search for algorithmic art, you're going to run into generative art where it just gets really more advanced. Basically, the tools that we can use nowadays to create this algorithmic art are tremendous. And they're sort of easy to use compared to how it started. Uh, one of the best examples I can think of is back in the early 80s, Star Trek II Wrath of Khan had a, a scene in it where they generated a landscape using a computer. And this was novel for the time. This was like so cutting edge completely blew people away. I think it won awards. So based on that, that same basic algorithm, I used a, I wrote a program sort of with the help of an example. I basically took an example from somewhere, deconstructed it, took it apart, put it back together the way that I liked it and was able to generate this artwork here using that same basic algorithm. And to not go into the math and that too far, what I can say is that you can generate a series of random numbers and they'd be scattered all over the place. What Perlin noise does is it generates random numbers that are all related to themselves in a certain way. And the end result is this kind of this smooth flowing, smoky, undulating, you know, whatever variables you put into it, you can get this different kind of uh, textured effect. So if you like what you've seen so far, be sure to hit subscribe, the bell, do all that, that business. That's what that thing's there for. So what do you think of these? Some of these take a, a little while to make because even though the computers are powerful, what I'm demanding of them is also increased. So it takes a little while, but nothing like the days and weeks it would have taken to generate the terraforming uh, scene from the Wrath of Khan. In addition to using Perlin noise, you can use things like oscillators and then just reprint simple geometry um, at a shape that increases and decreases at a certain rate and it moves across the screen uh, back and forth at a certain rate and then you can print those geometries in a kaleidoscopic pattern and create these incredible artworks that would be really tough to do by hand. I'm not saying you couldn't do them but you'd be using a lot of a straight edge and they probably wouldn't come out so clean. I can imagine this being done in Adobe Illustrator where you're just you're creating a geometry, you're reducing its size or scale, and you're moving it over ever so slightly, and you're changing its color, and you're doing this. How many of them are there in there? Hundreds of thousands. So the computer really does help uh, assist you in defining how things are changing and moving and whatnot. And it's doing it in a very uniform way. So if you want to learn more about this whole process, stay tuned because I kind of show you a little bit about how you could get started if you would like, if this is something that interests you. And uh, one of the first ways is just to go to the coding train or coding train on YouTube. It's Daniel Schiffman and he, he'll get you started. If you can't follow him, there's lots of other people that uh, can show you how to do it. So just find your favorite. Uh, Daniel seems to teach to me. Uh, the best. I mean, I learn from them the best, even though there've been others that have demonstrated the same thing. I feel like I just have a better time watching him. So yeah, uh, give his channel a look and, uh, get involved in this because it's a lot easier today than what it has ever been in the past. I, I did a lot of coding when I was in high school. I did some when I was in college, but, uh, the, the environments were changing too quickly and updating too quickly and then you need a lot of extra stuff to go with it. That's all changed. In 2017, P5JS came out and it works in the Chrome browser. So you don't, you don't need anything extra. All you need is just the browser and you can write your program right there inside the P5JS browser window and run your program. You can share it. Other people can run the program just by opening it in the browser. It's so easy. And then you have a library of all these tools. This is what makes it a great thing for artists because 
not only do you have all these geometries, you can manipulate them in two dimensions and three dimensions. There are a lot of preset tools that will do that for you. So you don't have to know the coding for all of that. Basically, you just have to know how to put all of these pieces together and tell them the information they need to do what they need to do. And that's kind of the tricky part. That's the grammar and the syntax that you have to learn. But it's a step by step process. And like I said, Coney train coding train will take you through it step by step. So here's what the P5JS browser looks like. You can take one of the examples from the uh, P5JS website, copy it out of the browser, paste it right into this constructor window and run the program yourself right there. And then if you'd like, if you understand a little bit about the variables, you can change things and adjust it and see what it does. Eventually, once you get familiar with everything, you can take them apart, uh, take pieces from this, pieces from that, put it together in something new, or you can just build something new from scratch. So what I've been doing is taking what is already there and changing it because I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I just want to look at it a little bit differently. So here I've used a, a program that uses noise, Perlin noise to make a wave. And I've just adjusted the red, green, and blue and how intense it's drawn to give it a different effect. And I move it down the screen. It, easy breezy. But then at the bottom, I got these sliders that let me adjust the variables in various ways. So I can make it go faster. I can make it fade faster or fade not at all. I can change the colors in various ways. So that's the drawing part. And then the computer is going to make what I adjust with the sliders down there. So you can see as a tool for an artist, uh, this is this just is amazing. This opens a whole world for me because there are lots of things that I've envisioned that could be done iterative and iteratively and I want to see what the output of that is. I can only sort of imagine it, but it would be nice to see it in different ways. So one of the really cool things about this besides making awesome art is that if you're able to mess around with the variables, it can give you a better sense of what is actually happening inside the program. In this case, the Perl and noise, it's not jittery random numbers everywhere. It's kind of this flowing kind of a fractal form and that the way that it's generated through this algorithm is more apparent when you adjust a certain variable, you can kind of see those random numbers moving across in uh, what's called an offset. And when you're learning this, it may not be apparent, but once you can see it and you can adjust that variable in real time, it becomes immediately apparent what is happening, at least in my case. So that's kind of the benefit of playing around with the variables and making little sliders so you can adjust. And the sliders weren't that hard to make. They were actually one of the easiest things to make of all the stuff is the sliders. It was just figuring out which variables to move and adjust was kind of the tricky part. So far, I've basically just been taking examples and modifying them to create whatever unique program or unique art. But here's one of the examples that I had the best results from, and it required the least amount of hack to, to change it to do what I wanted it to do. It was basically leave the lines and color them differently. Pretty simple hack, huge, huge difference in the results. As you can see, they're far more artistic than just gray lines and white dots moving around, which in itself was kind of interesting. It looked like a shifting constellation, but leaving the lines behind, it's kind of like, paint moving so I I feel like it's kind of like the computer painting using this algorithm this this generative kind of artwork thing well that's it for this episode thanks for watching algorithmic art generative art check it out it's really cool it's not some of it's not just a static image it's it's moving it's animated it interacts with you I, I know you've seen examples there are lots more out there and it's a, a growing growing world of art so uh, be sure to check that out. And as always, until next time, you guys, take care.